This tutorial is for creating an explosion from an assembly and also creating a parts list drawing sheet. So for this particular type of drawing sheet, we do not do a standard .ipm part file, IPT part file. We do not do an IAM assembly. We don't even really do a drawing sheet at this point. We're going to do the fourth type of file, standard.ipn. This is a presentation file. You'll see why it's called a presentation file momentarily. So as soon as we open it, it's going to ask you which assembly you want to use. You can't create a presentation unless you have an assembly. So we're going to click the train assembly that we created and click open. And so it gives us our train assembly right here, right in the middle of the page. So the idea behind this is we want to create a diagram or, or, a, or a drawing that shows how all of these parts would come together to create the final train. So imagine if you had a 10 piece puzzle. And the pieces were arranged, they were spread out, but they were arranged in the orientation they would need to be in order to complete the puzzle. That's kind of what we're doing here. We're going to pull the parts away from the center piece, away from the, the train body, and show how they would line up and how they would uh, insert. So to do that, I'm going to, this is, yeah, this is the reverse of the assembly process. We're going to unassemble it or disassemble it. So to do that, we're going to use the, there's only a few buttons up top. We're going to use tweak component. Tweak means to make a small adjustment. So we're going to tweak the components. So once I click on tweak, now this is something new and a little bit tricky. I have to think about how this would come apart. What's the first thing I need to take off? if I want to take the train apart. Well, it's the last thing I put on, or one of the last things I put on, and that's going to be these link pins. I have to pull the link pins out before I can pull the linkage arm out. Now, because I'm selecting two at the same time, I'll select the first one, and then I'm going to hold Shift and select the second one. And then I'm going to use the little arrow here, and I'm going to drag it outward just a little bit. I just want to make sure that I can see separation between the pins and the link arm. I'm going to hold shift again and click on the link arm this time, pull it out a little bit further. I'm going to hold shift again and this time I'm going to click on the axle bolts. And I'm going to grab the arrow and I'm going to pull it out a little bit further. And then finally I'm going to click hold shift and click on the wheels. And pull the arrow out and I'm going to go ahead and type in the number two to pull them two inches away from the train body. I can hit enter right here. So now we see these lines. These are called trail lines and they they show how the the parts line up and fit inside of each other. If you've ever had to put a bookcase together or put something together from a big box that you bought at Walmart, they will have a diagram like this that shows which screws or bolts go into which parts. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to tweak the cow catcher. And it gives me three arrows. I have three options. But if we remember how the pegs work, we're going to pull the cow catcher straight this way. Pull the peg straight out. And two inches is fine there. I'm going to do the same thing. Tweak components for the smokestack. I'm going to grab the vertical arrow and bring it up. I'll do 2.3 just for fun. I'm going to rotate to the back and then I'm going to do the same thing I did before with the shift but the first thing tweak the the uh, magnetic or the hitch bolt hitch peg pull that out Till you get clearance. Shift magnet. Pull that out some more till you get clearance. You can, you can say two if you want. 
By putting in two, that means this cow catcher is the same distance away from the train as the magnet. That's the reason. Just doing it for uniformity. And then the last part is going to be this side of the wheel. This side of the train body pulling the wheels and the, and, and the same thing we did over here. So tweak. And I'm going to have to zoom in so I can make sure I just get the pin. I'm going to get this pin as well. Shift for this pin. Grab the arrow. Grab the arrow. Slide it back a little bit. Shift linkage arm. Slide it back till it clears. Shift axle. Axle. Slide that out until it until you see some separation between the parts and then shift wheel wheel and slide that until there's some separation between the wheels and the train body and then we're going to rotate it back around to where we started here i don't like this view simply because this train wheel and this cow catcher are getting covered up. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rotate back to here. I'm going to come over to where it says train assembly scene. I'm going to click the plus sign. Then by the word tweaks, I'm going to click the plus sign again. And this last tweak is set at 2.25. All I'm going to do is change that number to 2.75. And let's see if that moves the wheel out of the way. Not, not enough. Not enough. So what I can do now is change the smokestack and pull it out further. So hover until you find the smokestack glowing and lighting up. There we go. So right now I set it 2.3. I'm going to go ahead and set it at an even 3 inches. That's better. Still not perfect. So let's go back here. Make this an even 3 inches. So you see the idea is that I'm making sure that the view has complete clearance. So I'm going to change the smokestack again to four. There we go. I just want to make sure that these two are not overlapping because sometimes when you print it out, it's hard to tell if your printers run out of ink, it's hard to tell that they are two different parts. So by making sure we have clearance here, that kind of takes care of that. And then I can rotate it either way. I think I'm going to rotate. I think I'm going to go this way with it because I, there's more separation here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click, kind of get it where it's centered. I'm going to click new snapshot. And notice it gives me a picture over here on the right. That's a snapshot. That's a photo, if you will. But it's not taking an actual JPEG photo. It is taking a snapshot of the view, like the isometric view, the view that you would bring in to a drawing sheet. Another neat little thing about this, I'm gonna, if we go to the bottom here, here, let's rotate it back around to our original view. And let's look, click the play arrow. This is why we do a presentation file. So if you created a toy or a puzzle or something that needed to be assembled, you could easily, let's play it in reverse. You could put this on your website and then after someone buys the product, if they're having trouble assembling it at home, they can go to your website and they can watch this little video showing how to put everything on the, the, the product. So they could see how to assemble it. If you're putting Legos together and you can't quite figure how to make that Lego Millennium Falcon, then you could show videos to show how to put the different pieces back together and which pieces go where. Just, a, just a, another little thing that Inventor can do that not a lot of people are familiar with. So, we're going to leave it just like that. This view over here, the view one, 
that we took the snapshot of, that's the one we're going to use when we make our drawing sheet. So let's go ahead and save. Train assembly is fine. Actually, we're going to call this train explosion. This is called an explosion or exploded view where we've pulled it apart, pulled the assembly apart. That's an exploded view. Okay, we've saved it. We're done with this for now. The next thing we're going to do is open a Rock Hill drawing sheet. Remember, we want all caps here. Part name. Just call it train. Train parts list. So you have your train parts list, you go to base, you go to file, and this time we want the train explosion right here. Click open. Now this may come up and we'll have to rotate the cube because it may give us a front view. It may give us... So it gave us this view here. Now I already know that I want to rotate it. No, I said I like this view. I'm going to, I'm going to keep this view. And then we're going to stretch it out a little bit. So I'm going to do a half scale, see what that looks like. One slash two. Yeah, that's about the right size. So we're going to use, I don't know if it'll let me do this. No. Um, I'm going to do one third, one slash three. Shrink it down just a little bit. Um, how about two slash five? There we go. Let's leave it like that for, for now. I'm going to bring it down just slightly. And the reason I'm sliding it over and making sure it's the right size, oops, don't need to do that, is because we need to leave room to make what we call a parts list. Oh, by the way, right click on the red dotted box, edit view, and shade. We need to do a couple of things. We're going to make a parts list, which will list all the parts and how many there are. And we're going to have to put labels up here. So if we look up here on all the drawing sheets, we click on annotate. And instead of clicking on dimension like we normally would, or chamfer, or hole in thread, we normally use these. We're going to go all the way over here to the right and go to parts list. So I'm going to click on parts list and it says select document. Well, if I just click on the picture, it selects that document. And then click OK and then click OK again. And it gives me this long, I'm going to just put it here for now because I'm going to get rid of this description column. There's nothing in it. There's no reason to have anything in it. So I know it's overlapping. That's not where it's going to be finally. So if we right click on the word description and we go down to edit parts list, here's where we have options to get rid of the different columns. So choose the very first button. It says column chooser. Here's description. Click on description and click remove. And click OK. And OK again. And so now it's gotten rid of that empty column. And now I can slide it right here. It fits perfectly right beside the, um, the title block. So let's see. Item 1 is the train body. There should be one of them. Item 2, there's one cow catcher. Item 3, there's one smokestack. Item 6, there's four train wheels. Item 8, there's two linkage arms. So when we go to put labels on here for items one, two, three, and four, I'm going to, by the way, I'm probably going to enlarge this. I'd like it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to right click again. You don't have to do this, but I, I, I want to be a little bit bigger. I'm going to go back to one half.
Just barely get it in there. That's close enough. Okay. Bigger is better. You know, ideally, I would have it where this is over here and that parts list is somewhere else, but we don't have, we don't have the extra room. You know, if maybe if I didn't pull this out as far, if I went back and changed this distance to two and a half or two and two quarters or two and a quarter, like I did over here, then that wouldn't be overlapping. It would be fine. But I think what we've got right now is, is, is fine. Um, the final thing are the balloons. We call the labels, so we click on balloon. We call the label that you put to indicate which part is which number, here item number, we call those balloons. So the good thing about Inventor is once you've created this and you have your parts list, it doesn't matter what order you click on the individual part, double click to set it. Inventor knows that this magnet or this train hitch peg is number five and right here in the list it's number five so it doesn't matter what order you do them in just click once on the part itself and then click double click to set the label i'm going to put this here and instead of trying to cram anything in this corner i'm going to use these down here and you don't have to label you don't have to label every linkage pin you just label one of them there's a linkage arm there's an axle bolt. And what are we missing? Train body. And cow catcher. So let's double check. We got them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're all there. And that is the finished product. That's the final page of the entire project portfolio. You've got drawing sheets for each individual part. You've got an assembly file, and now you have a parts list. So we would go to save. Of course, save the explosion. Uh, click yes to all, and then OK. Let that think for a second. And then go to file, export, PDF. And then click it's under train explosion you can change this let's change this to parts list train parts list that'll be a little bit easier for you to find when you go to upload it in canvas at least what to remember right and that's it